All right, Daniel, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Hey. Um, I was like, Infinity is blowing my mind and stuff. Good. So, <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> so when we were talking about yesterday in class, um, like limbs or limitations and stuff. Yes. Um, and we were talking about, you know, X travels to infinity pretty much. It's the kind of, you know, how it's, we're saying limb and then X goes you to may, infinity. You may yeah. loosely and incorrectly think X travels towards infinity. It's the right okay. idea, technically the wrong language. Gotcha. Because you can't get towards infinity. There's no way to yeah. prove that, right? Because because if you say a thousand is closer to infinity, I'm going to be like, did you try that with subtraction? Like, how'd you prove that, right? Towards and closer to an unreachable goal, difficult oh. argument to make. Instead, the proper background of that is X is increasing without restriction. Uh, because okay. um, when we went over the um, quadratic divided by a quadratic in class yesterday, we yeah. were saying that X gets larger and larger. And then we brought it up to its limit has to be two because we figured out the largest factors or whatever. And um, then we multiplied it by one divided by X squared. So we're saying that X is getting smaller and smaller, pretty much. So it's an infinitely small number right? close we're saying constant divided by x is a forever small let's just, let's just come up with a, a fun example it's just something to, to put us in front of us so we've got this over we'll do uh that limit x grows without bound Right, which again, if yep. you read that as X approaches infinity, I'm okay with that because that's going to be the game we play in, in this class a lot is we're going to say something loosely and then we're going to correct ourselves before we write it down as a sentence and make it proper, gotcha. right? So, so it's okay to loosely X play with X continues without bound is like the official. Yes, gotcha. that is the official. Okay. But if you write down, you're like X, like X increases towards infinity or the limit as X goes towards infinity, I'm not going to like take that off unless I'm looking for like proper language. Gotcha. Okay. okay. All right, play from here. Um, so if we multiplied both the top and the bottom by one divided by x squared, mm -hmm. you could now cancel. notice by the way that's that's motivated counterintuitively. That's a, that's a an offshoot strategy. Yeah, yeah, the because direct... it's saying it's smaller. Where this we're saying x squared. You know, because we have like ten billion times ten billion, it's way bigger than you know one billion. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Because be, the direct yeah. strategy most people try is they try this. But we can't put infinity into equations. But I don't want that to be a rule. <laughs> okay. You, you, want, you want to see why it doesn't work? Let's just play. All right, infinity squared is what? It's still infinity. Times two? It's still infinity. Plus three infinities? It's still infinity. <laughs> Plus minus two is? Infinity. Infinity. So this is going to simplify to infinity. What about on the bottom? It's going to simplify to infinity. What? Okay, what's infinity divided by infinity? Infinity. Uh, something divided <laughs> by itself? Oh. One? Right? Is that but like, we can't. So, 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 so here's the problem. I can already, you already can tell by looking at this and employing whatever rules, graphical or examples you've had previously, this should come out as two thirds. Mm -hmm. And we've all of a sudden shown that it equals one. What's the problem here? We've disguised the details. Infinity absorbed all the details and made it impossible for us to compare the two infinities. <laughs> gotcha. So that's why we can't plug in infinity and we go, okay, what could we do instead? And it's like, oh, I really want this to drive it. How do I reframe the conversation so it's not everything grows to infinity, it's everything else grows to become insignificant? Gotcha. Okay, so now play. Go ahead from there. So if we go on across that, then everything else grows to be insignificant. We can do what we did in class yesterday and multiply top and bottom by a one divided by x squared. Yeah, so we recognize logically that if we were to plug in bigger and bigger real numbers, this would have been the driver. So we make that appear blatant in our algebra. 
by scaling everything down in terms of that, in doing so, we've taken the biggest thing that could run off towards infinity and we've made it unable to run off towards infinity because we've scaled everything else down. And in doing so, nothing else goes off to infinity. Everything else stays in the real number line as well. Gotcha. So it's a really nice strategy of saying, instead of looking for things to grow big, let's look for what could stay the most constant and let everything else grow small. Like it's very creative. So if we uh, do that, because we're talking about a number that grows without bounds to be smaller and smaller, pretty much. So X is growing without bounds. Yes. So that's where we now look at it term by term. As X changes, how does two change? Two does not change. As X gets big, what happens to three over X? It gets smaller. It gets smaller. So if we plugged in things like we could, we can make little mini lists down here as reference, right? Because that's the logic happening behind the scenes is the method of exhaustion. We're just doing it faster than we can make a list. So if we do three divided by X, that is three and then 0.3 and then 0.03. And so we can, uh, we know the logic to say this has to track to zero. Yeah. And then we could do so, the same thing with, okay, how does two over X squared, in fact, negative two over X squared behave? And so again, I it's, feel like that's kind of a part where it's getting confusing is because we discuss an infinitesimal number, infinitely small number. And then we said it's not a real number, but we're also saying it's zero. No, 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 no. So if you go back through it, we talked about infinitesimals because that's something that feels right. Okay right? It feels like there should be something left that makes 0.9 repeating not equal to one, right? But when we yeah. actually did that exploration, we found out that that number does not behave the way numbers should on the real number line. It ends up making one equal 10 and a bunch of bonker stuff happen, right? So if I can't even do addition with this thing called infinitesimals, then infinitesimals must not belong on my real number line, because okay. the real number line allows for addition. It's one of the axioms we brought up in the very early classes. We said, this gotcha. has to make sense that I get another number by adding and I get numbers by negatives and division. And this thing doesn't behave by none of that. <laughs> so if we can't discuss an infinitely small number, how can we say it's zero? Exactly right. So now we say, okay, if I wanted there to be a number there, the only number possibly would be an infinitesimally small number. Yep. Okay, but an infinitesimally small number makes no sense on the real number line. So what is the thing? And that becomes a conversation where, again, we have this idea of what is forever number of zeros, dot, 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 and then a one, <laughs> right? What is this thing? In truth, this is a paradox. This doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to have a forever number of zeros and then something after forever. Yeah. So instead we say, what is this number actually? It's a forever number of zeros. There is no after. There is no after of forever. In the same way as 0.9 repeating is one. It's not a little bit off of one. It's not a little bit below one. The act of forever approaching one is the exact same thing as being at one. And so that's the parrot, like that's the big linchpin in calculus is recognizing forever approach means I got there. That they are literally the same sentence, although they sound different. <laughs> that I can't forever approach and not get there because to forever approach and not get there, I would have had to stop and I can't stop if I'm forever approaching. <laughs> so forever approach is the same thing as getting there. Infinitesimals are not real. The real number is zero. Okay. And it's not just a happenstance. It's literally saying there's no such thing as forever small in the number line. No, you either getting close to zero forever, in which case you're at zero. <laughs> There's nothing else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, because... like, it's, 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 it's weird. It's super fun. It also is very exciting and insightful because it starts to recognize all these difficult problems people are trying to handle in the world can sometimes be handled more easily by considering forever approaches. 
like for example did you ever watch um avatar that like beautiful animated movie from a while ago yeah not the airbender that one sucked right <laughs> so so if you watch that one that movie all of those nature scenes that had curvy plant-like stuff in the forest they yeah. were not modeled with curves they were modeled with polygons they had rough edges around every single one of them but because they made that model using billions of polygons with billions of sides it looked smooth and in truth yeah. it made the computational power much much easier because otherwise they would have had to model every curve by hand gotcha so it's that idea of saying a perf like a movie is literally a forever number of photos next to each other <laughs> like it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it gives us different perspectives very applicable because any you know circles bunch of pixels or square objects pretty much on a screen so yeah so this thing comes out as two-thirds which is also why if you go back in an algebra textbook it'll say like the rule for determining horizontal asymptotes is if the degrees are the same then we do a ratio of their leading coefficients or whatever yeah yeah that's that's nowhere near as much fun and insightful as like what's yeah, actually and it also happening. doesn't really tell you anything it doesn't tell you anything at all like it literally has no why <laughs> it just isn't is like we can kind of logic through it as again saying they're both growing and they're the drivers of the growth, but the best proof is to bring it away from infinity and back towards the real number line. Gotcha. Because we can't deal with infinity. <laughs> cannot play with infinity, cannot add infinitesimals. They're super tempting. We're going to get really close and about halfway through the semester, we're going to give up the goat and finally go, you know what? I've proved the logic behind forever approaches that now I will allow myself to incorrectly use infinitesimals all over my math, and then I'll just make it correct at the end. <laughs> like, we'll play with that after we've really locked down that what gotcha. we are doing is not correct. Then we'll give ourselves artistic freedom with all the backing of the week's worth of uh, stuff we've proven. 